Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And congratulations on the map. Right. Thanks so, so much, Gabriel, for having us. No, appreciate it. Um, so we're literally, everybody is looking at the 2020 map right now. There seems to be a lot going on right now. Um, Iming, I think first question for everybody's benefit, compared to the 2019 landscape map, um, we're now looking at the 2020 version. Very shortly, maybe share with us, what are some of the updates? What are some of the things that essentially have uh, you know, improved or any changes, anything we should take note of that makes 2020's map so special? Hmm. I think since 2019, show growth, there are 91 new additions to the Singapore blockchain landscape uh, map for 2020, making it a total of uh, 234 entities. I mean, these entities have been active in various blockchain-related initiatives. Uh, some of these include global players like Mastercard, Visa, Alibaba Bank and Financial, Tencent Bank, uh, WeBank, WireX, and local guys like Philip Securities. There's also SAP, Contour, and also uh, Libra that uh, Tomasic recently partnered up with. So this year's map also includes a new segment, uh, Decentralized Finance, as a notable area for 2020. That has seen new companies emerge, uh, as well as incumbents extending their services into uh, various areas. There have also been an increase uh, due to numerous global recognized projects. So like what I mentioned earlier, Tomasic has recently partnered uh, Facebook back Libra as its first Asian member. And we have also seen them uh, spinning out uh, several subsidiaries focusing on blockchain applications, uh, including digital identity and trade finance itself. All right, Yiming, thank you very much. Veronica, once again, thank you for joining us again. Uh, it's great to see you since uh, Brock Show last year in November as well. Uh, very quickly, following up to whatever Yiming has said, um, maybe you can share a little bit with us, shed some light. What inspired you to spearhead creating this whole Singapore blockchain landscape map, which we're all looking at right now? Like, what's the, 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 the reason, the inspiration, and the vision from creating something like this? Um, I guess for us, we tend to host overseas delegations visiting Singapore, understanding more about our approach for digital economy. And some of them are interested to also find out more about the blockchain landscape in Singapore. So we used to put together a slide with the logos of some companies that we know of that are doing work in this area. And we realized that there was some interest because people would stand up, take pictures of the slides. And we thought that maybe it does make sense to put something together a bit more comprehensively to make it easier for overseas delegations who want to know more and be able to find the companies a bit more easily. So that's how uh, we thought it would be useful to actually get something started. Mm. So I would say that the map, you know, as you mentioned, a lot of people take pictures of the slides. So the map's kind of like a good start for people to really understand, you know, what's the Singapore blockchain ecosystem really looking at. And I think you mentioned that, you know, you guys do a lot of overseas initiatives, etc., etc., that you've also mentioned as well. Um, Besides, you know, besides the map, which you obviously see now, maybe you can shed a little bit of light again to all of us. What other initiatives uh, has IMDA actually have uh, that actually supports? Uh, number one, obviously, the growth of the local uh, blockchain ecosystem, the startups, for example. And, and obviously, the next one is uh, for foreign blockchain companies or foreign blockchain startups that are looking to come um, into Singapore as well. So I guess we've been uh, running a series of thematic blockchain challenges. So this uh, provides support to companies that have reached a stage where they have um, a small minimum viable ecosystem to kickstart initial blockchain projects in specific areas, whether it's um, in track and trace or um, digital advertising and so on. So for projects that uh, go beyond the POC phase, typically they'll look into start scaling up, let's say um, maybe more formalized um, commercial agreements rather than um, MOUs. And we also realized that there's also some challenges uh, for projects at this space. Um, we have been seeing um, some talk about formation of blockchain consortia. So I think um, to help projects who have reached this phase, we're also looking at uh, possibly a blockchain consortia governance framework that would help companies that are at this stage of the journey. So regardless of whether you're a local company or a foreign company um, coming into Singapore, we hope that some of these enablers will help uh, to mitigate some of the challenges in getting their projects started and basically growing into the next phase.
Mm, okay. And and just as a follow-on question, very quickly, um, for, for actually, actually for evening. So based on everything that Veronica has said from the initiatives, maybe for everybody's benefit as a as an ecosystem builder from the ground up, how does you know like like open notes or a tribe come into the picture, uh, especially for the people outside of Singapore who are watching this right now? Mm. I think recent studies uh, from the Deloitte Global Blockchain Survey in 2019 and 2020, uh, we have seen more organizations recruiting blockchain experts globally. So I think a lot of uh, Fortune 500 companies have started to look into blockchain uh, with much more serious note itself. So definitely we hope to work with these leading players uh, to help startups uh, or corporates that are based in Singapore wanting to look at blockchain related uh, initiatives over the next few years itself. Uh, we hope to drive more cross-border collaborations uh, with governments from different parts of the world, uh, more partnerships, uh, more use case uh, that can be shared. So we, we've started with the Dutch Blockchain Coalition uh, in late 2019. So we've been working closely with them to look at certain cross-border use cases that can be applied between uh, Dutch and the Singapore side itself. And we hope to do more uh, internationally. Mm, okay, and and for for open notes and for for tribe accelerator, how many of these enterprise or corporate partners are you working with uh, currently? Are you collaborating with currently as part of your whole entire uh, initiative as well? So for tribe itself, uh, we work with more than seventy uh, global organizations uh, that are supporting the ecosystem. So it ranges from global corporates, government agencies, startups. Uh, associations, uh, universities, uh, so on and so forth. Hmm, interesting. All right. So right now, we've really spoken about, obviously, the, the what we're looking right now at the blockchain landscape map. And, you know, you know thank you for sharing also, Veronica, the initiatives. I mean, you've also covered, um, you know, given examples of how you guys are actually engaging the different, you know, enterprises and verticals with regards to blockchain adoption. So I'm going to throw this question out just out of curiosity for everybody that's watching right now. Uh, and maybe, Veronica, I'll start with you on that. Um, can you share a little bit more about your thoughts. Um, I know that um, collectively, uh, you know, the whole blockchain adoption journey um, has already been around for probably uh, three years or so already. What, you know, like, like, what do you think, Veronica, the next uh, three years you envision, you know, what do you think three years from now, the, the blockchain landscape map will look like three years from now? Well, hopefully a lot more vibrant and richer. But I think uh, blockchain has also been described as a foundational technology uh, by Harvard Business Review in an article that's several years old but still fairly valid. So as a foundational technology, it will probably take some time uh, to grow steadily. And some of the studies we read also say that the initial wave will be probably in the permission blockchain um, in uh, reducing inefficiencies. But in the longer term, then the transformational business models will emerge. So I think that is uh, generally the sentiment that we get from reading various industry reports. Ah, interesting. Aiming, do you share the same thoughts? Do you think that uh, that is the blockchain is really going to be the foundation onto something uh, greater? I personally like to say that where blockchain is right now, it's kind of like how we're at home entertainment systems, where we're at the laser disc stage, where we're slowly, you know, in the next few years progressing to maybe something like a DVD, Blu-ray, Netflix, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, type of phase kind of thing. Would you would you see that as well in the next three years? I think yeah. Uh, yes, definitely. I think uh, from, from our side, we agree with Veronica, uh, team as well on their outlook on the ecosystem. Uh, and definitely, like what I mentioned earlier on, we hope to garner more collaboration because blockchain in itself is a collaborative technology. Uh, so we hope to build, continue to build uh, momentum with governments, corporates, uh, startups from all around the globe to really drive this ecosystem forward and to place uh, Singapore as the one of the leading hubs in uh, Asia itself for blockchain. Nice, nice. And I think building uh, something, I think if you want to build something to be a leading hub and everything like that, you definitely need all the support you can get. And I think with the enterprise support tribe has, and obviously from the support you get from Veronica and the team, I think it's definitely everything's in sync and, and everything. And definitely, you know, I think the next, I'm not even say the next three years, I think the next one year is probably going to be interesting. Uh, the ecosystem, um, and I think the, the the way things are moving, it's always very interesting, and there's always something new every few months, or sometimes even once every month as well. So just just to just to get it uh, for now, now that the map's officially unveiled uh, 
for the first time in front of everybody. Um, you know, to the both of you, where where can everybody find the map? I mean, it's like definitely everybody's like I, I, people are probably not using their phones to take pictures right now. They're probably taking screenshots of us live right now. So it's like just what everybody's everybody's going to take a screenshot and they're going to be like, well, resolution's a bit lower. So where can we find a proper version of the map? Can you just share that with us? Well, you can find it on Open Notes website. So IMDA website is also being updated to point to uh, the version that's on um, Open Notes website. Nice. Interesting. Okay. So um, just for everybody's benefit, um, during this time with Magically also, oh, if you're in Brella right now and if you look at the chat room, uh, which is actually on my right, uh, if you're looking at me right now, you'll see the chat room and you'll see that the uh, link essentially where you could actually find the map when it goes live is actually available uh, for you, right? Um, we've still got maybe a few minutes left. So um, I'm just going to wrap up kind of like a bonus question and everything. Um, and maybe for Yiming, I will probably ask that question to you first. Um, so we spoke about the next uh, three years and everything. Um, given everything that's happened from, I don't know, with you know, challenges we've gotten with the pandemic um, in Singapore, I think now we're all into phase two, some say it's phase two and a half, you know, getting out of uh, the circuit breaker um, after this. Um, what can we probably expect uh, from open notes um, in the next six months for, or rather say for the rest of the year? Mm -hmm. Uh, definitely, there will be more activities happening, ha happening uh, through the Open Notes platform itself. There will be more content coming out in the second half of the year. Uh, we are ramping up for uh, the Singapore Fest uh, Singapore FinTech Festival X uh, Singapore Week of uh, Innovation Technology Switch itself uh, in the later half of the year. So definitely, there will be more activities that uh, the global community can, uh, can stay tuned for itself. So looking forward uh, to see more collaborative partnerships, uh, more corporate engagement, uh, and more startup solutions uh, through these various uh, activities that we'll be running across the next half year itself. All right. Um, Veronica, maybe for you as well. So last year, we did the very first ecosystem map. Um, and that was followed up in the later part of the year with an ecosystem report. So this year, apart from this ecosystem map, we're also working on a report and earlier on, I mentioned that we're looking into blockchain consortia governance. So hopefully have uh, something that we can share with everyone when it's a little bit ready uh, later on. Mm. Hopefully still in 2020? Uh, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Okay. All right. So everyone, uh, once again, um, you can find information about the map um, in the chat room, essentially, um, where you see uh, it's live. Obviously, if you're an umbrella, you'll see it. Um, if not, for those that don't, uh, if you're watching it uh, live on the Cointelegraph YouTube channel, you can essentially uh, log into Brella. It's just a one-minute thing, um, and you can get access to the link exactly uh, for the map. Um, and also another thing as well. Actually, yes, Yiming, why don't we just give a very quick shout-out? Um, so what's Open Notes URL? And uh, everybody can also go check it out. Um, I think it's a very interesting initiative. It's uh, Open Notes, what again? OpenNotes.com. Okay, opennotes.com. Easy. One well, shouldn't be able to forget that one as well. Um, anyway, I think we are just about done. Once again, congratulations. Thank you, Yiming, as well, for all the efforts uh, putting it together. Veronica, as well. Um, I know it's not easy putting something like this and, and you know mapping out an ecosystem and everything. It's not. Uh, absolutely not, right? So I really appreciate the efforts. Uh, we're very excited. I, myself, am very excited to probably zoom in a little bit more on the map um, and take a look at uh, how the ecosystem has grown over the last one year. Yeah. But other than that, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us. And everyone, thank you again. And we will be back shortly.